Hey everyone, what's the crack? Today we're looking at the Simagic P2000 pedals. Now there's a lot of excitement about these pedals. Uh, I'm very excited about them. I have had them here for the past week or so, but I haven't had a chance to install them yet because uh, I was doing another pedal review. Today is the day we get to open this box uh, and see what they're like. They look from photos that I've seen, uh, they look incredible. The thing that excites me the most is that, I, as you know, I'm quite a fan of Simagic products and the quality is usually extremely good. So uh, I've got high hopes for this one. Let's unbox it. Okay, let's get this unboxed. Uh, plenty of tape on this. This of course was sent from simware.eu. Uh, they got it from uh, China. We might see multiple packaging layers. This should be pretty much what you get uh, when you order this from simware.eu. Oh, look at that. Okay, we've got some nice, nice box in here. Let's get that out. Future is here. You guys know I love, I love my cheesy slogans on this stuff. Throw that box over here. Uh, that's a nice looking box. It popped open a little bit there. Nice looking box, a little bit weathered looking from the journey over, uh, but that's not uh, not completely unexpected. Uh, would be nice if it was, it was cleaner. Uh, it is the type of box. Some people like to display their boxes or at least keep them uh, really nice until they need to, you know, resell uh, or whatever. There we go. Okay, so the first thing we see is a manual, a warranty card. So typically these warranty cards from Simagic uh, just have uh, some basic information about the, the warranty on there. Buyer must retain the warranty, all that kind of stuff. It's the P2000 uh, TBCR. So put that warranty card over here. This is the base plate. So that looks incredibly solid. Very, very heavy. Uh, what's that? That's probably about six or seven mils. Could even be more. Could be an eight mil plate. A couple of scratches on it, um, but Again, it's a base plate. Uh, I'm not going to be uh, kind of too picky on that. Uh, let's see, you can see here there, just a couple of little, little scratches, little imperfections on there, but that's not going to be a big issue. The, uh, the unboxing experience is just getting to be nicer and nicer uh, with the Magic products. This shows uh, just some basic dimensions, the, uh, the kind of the width of the pedals and stuff like that. So that's quite nice, quite a nice card. It's, uh, interesting that it's on you know a large piece like this uh, but it's nice that's a nice divider between the base plate and the pedals another a fairly typical Simagic USB cable uh, it's one of these kind of pink ones I tend not to really use them because I'm not too sure about the pink especially when matched with the Simagic red here we've got pedal faces so these pedal faces are all together they look really nice though the, those little indents they look kind of like, um, I, I, you know, like a diamond cut, like you'd see on a on a wheel. Uh, they're they're actually quite a quite a nice detail, and they feel they feel incredibly well finished. Uh, there's kind of a, a a a knurled finish on the pedal, uh, so it should be grippy in some ways, and it should allow just enough slip as well. I think that you know that that's uh, that's quite nice. All the pedal faces um, are exactly the same size, it seems. So you don't have a different size for the throttle. We'll see what that means in actual terms when we're using it. In recent times uh, with pedals, I've kind of liked like a long throttle pedal. And now the thing is with these, you can quite easily change them. One of the cool things to note with these is that these are threaded at the rear. So nothing comes through the front. So that is why they have such a nice look when they're installed. There are no bolts coming through the front of it. Uh, which is very, very nice. Here we go, our first pedal here. And this is uh, the big one. Check that out. Our P2000 hydraulic brake pedal. That really looks nice. A little reservoir here. Um, some braided hosing. Uh, we've got uh, springs on here. It looks like we'll be able to change those springs. This is just a little plug for, uh, I'm guessing there's the load cell in there. Um, and uh, yeah, as, as you'd expect, the, the, the finish here 
is is pretty stunning again some tiny tiny imperfections um but nothing nothing that's going to worry anybody really uh, but beautiful finish really nice like these these parts are so so nicely machined definitely a fan of that that looks it looks stunning the, 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 the visually they're just super impressive uh, and then down here in the next layer we've got uh more stuff so this looks like let me see that looks probably like the throttle okay there's a nice damper on that throttle and it's uh, adjustable by hand so um we see not as much adjustment that we see on the likes of uh, the Hosingfeld Sprints, the Mecha Cup 1s, the Simforge uh, Mark 1s. Uh, but that's not to say that this isn't, you know, uh, as versatile. Uh, we'll have to see that in practice. I'm going to run it in its default form at the start. But uh, everything is hand adjustable here. So even adjusting that little bit of, you know, preload on it. But that feels like a very, very nicely damped throttle. So I'm, I'm definitely, I'm excited about this throttle. I wasn't expecting it to feel that nice. When I do adjust these, just wondering if I feel, oh yeah, feel massive difference there. That's really easy to adjust. You just, you have a little wheel on the back here and, and it's just, it's super easy to adjust. So you can almost see it. That's quite easy to push. When I put it to six, now it's a lot more difficult to push. A little bit like uh, we see the uh, Asatec Invicta, we've seen some previews of that. That's all hand adjustable as well. And even this little uh, clip here, uh, it's, it makes it quite easy to just adjust this. That will be a toolless adjustment of that, which I'm, I like, I'm, I'm quite a fan of that. And here would be the, the clutch. Okay, so with the clutch, there is a little slot that it goes down into there. Now, obviously you can't adjust that slot and I don't want to squash my fingers here because it's quite aggressive when it does go into that slot, but this moves back and then in, and that's your kind of your clutch feel. Again, uh, adjustable with um, just this clip here. You will need a spanner if you want to adjust that, but I'm not sure if, the, if that's just, I'm not sure if that part here is actually uh, adjustable. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, there's a spring on it um, and again this looks to be a, a load cell um, so yeah again, look at that finish it's it's really st it's a stunning finish really really nice what else have we got in here okay we've got a huge selection a relatively huge selection of springs we've got three of these larger springs that look to be for the clutch uh, and we've got uh, a red, a yellow, um, a green, and a blue, and there's already a yellow and a red in the uh, in the brake so far. So it looks like we'll have plenty of adjustment in those springs as well. And as always, this Simagic branded bags, I, I really love that. I just think it's it's a it's such a nice little touch. I know it's not important in the grand scheme of things, but I guess to me it is important. Um, they've got mounting hardware here. Uh, so there's a little a little bracket. We'll have to see how we uh, install that. I'll be building these in just a minute. We'll worry about all that in a little while. And we've got some more bolts here. Uh, they just look like our standard, uh, you know, six mil bolts. And then we've got this little Simagic um, circuit board, which allows for four inputs which is interesting because um, obviously we have three pedals, but it has four little inputs on there. So that's interesting. There's a little set button on it. You can see that here, set, press that, um, and a USB um, in, uh, output there. So nice and tidy. We'll probably just be sticking that somewhere. Uh, it looks like they have supplied some uh, 3M uh, sticky stuff there, so we can stick that wherever we like. Um, and uh, yeah, let's let's start assembling this. So this is the uh, base plate. Um, we can see it's got uh, countersunk holes here. It also has some countersunk holes here. 
but uh, this is actually the, the top of it. And we can see those scratches that we talked about earlier, they're at the bottom anyway, so we don't need to worry about those uh, whatsoever. Uh, what I might do just to make this easier, is put this on here so that I don't scratch my table. Um, and our pedals are going to go on, this is going to be the front, because this is where our feet are gonna rest. Um, and the throttle is going to go over here somewhere. So these are for the throttle. Uh, looks like they're gonna be a, a very easy installation. Um, there's no like sliding in channels or anything like that uh, that we need to worry about. I'm not sure what these channels, oh, these, these channels might be just for mounting to a rig. Um, so we'll worry about that in a while. I think these are the, the bolts that we need here. Uh, they already have uh, little washers installed, uh, which is, is good because those washers often get forgotten. So that's just hand tight for now. Uh, we're gonna grab the uh, clutch as well. Just hand tight is fine for now. And we can see that these already exit so I don't know if these were test fitted or whatever, but we can see that they already exit on the right, on, on the correct sides. Um, so that has been taught about. The next thing, and we're not gonna worry about the, um, the cylinder here, here. We're gonna want to play around with heel toe and stuff as well. So we don't wanna be too far away from the throttle. So let me just see with the faces on there, how far away this is going to be. I do wonder how it's gonna go with heel toe. Um, they do have, they have a nice little beveled edge, but I wonder how, with the smaller pedal faces, I wonder how it's going to perform when it comes to heel toe. I mean, he heel toe is kind of becoming a little bit of a, a forgotten art, um, especially with uh, you know cars having auto blip and simulators, I guess, being a little bit uh, forgiving when it comes to your downshifts, there we go. Now we need to see where we're going to actually mount this and how that gets mounted. So for the um, brake cylinder here, I'm probably gonna mount it down here and there's a little piece with it, little aluminium piece that needs to go in there. So we have some of these bolts. I'm guessing it's just gonna be as simple as installing this in here. Don't know if it's wise to do this part first or do the base part first. I guess we'll uh, find that out the hard way. Like that, and then this will, that's one offered. Then the next one, so again, we have the um, correct Allen keys supplied, which is, which is always nice. Probably should have done the base ones first. So when you're doing this, I'd say do the the ones that go into the base first. And then this is a slightly larger size Allen key. Again, they provide them. So this should be relatively straightforward. There we go. And this, now there's a QR code on the, uh, the brake here. I'm actually just going to, out of curiosity, I wonder why they put a QR code there um, I'm guessing it could be, you know, a, a safety instruction or something. Opening Chrome, WeChat. Okay, I don't really want to connect to WeChat. I don't use WeChat. Um, yeah, I'm not really too interested in joining WeChat. Get these pedal faces sorted before anything else. So you can just simply from the rear here, Mount these. I'm gonna mount these, I think, relatively low. I like to rest my foot on the heel plate. Um, and one thing that, you know, is, is really kind of uh, obvious with these is that, um, I mean, there's, there's no real, there's no real, like there's obviously a base, which is great that you can put your feet on, but there's no support, uh, no lip near the pedals that you can rest on. So uh, um, I think I'll probably be relatively low does look like a lot of uh, thought has been put into these, which is always nice as well. Their machining is incredible quality. 
um, just you know to see this to see this level and the details of the you know the, the the beveled edges and stuff to see that detail in sim racing is really cool so you can actually uh, on the pedals you've got these two at the side as well so you could you know for instance put your clutch completely out, out of the way and make your brake and pedal a little bit more like that uh, formula style or um you know for heel toe or whatever if you did want to just adjust it quite simply um you can do that so far this has all been extremely intuitive so i like that there it's not too intimidating from like there are not too many moving parts um and the adjustment seems relatively straightforward. What you can often see on these pedals is that although people welcome the adjustment, the adjustment can often be overwhelming and potentially underused. Uh, but this uh, does look like, I really, I really like that throttle. I love the damper on that throttle. I think it's, uh, well, I love, I love the idea of it so far. Obviously I haven't used it, but uh, yeah, pretty cool. Then the last thing to do is if we just flip this around here, the, uh, the last thing to do is to grab uh, these three and our little circuit. And we've got, they are actually labeled here. So we've got handbrake. So, I mean, that's a clear indication that they're going to be doing a handbrake in the, in the near future. Uh, clutch, brake and throttle. So uh, throttle is, this last one here. These are similar connectors to what we see inside the wheelbases or inside the steering wheels and that. Uh, this is the clutch and then the brake is here. So we'll see when it's actually on the rig uh, where we're going to mount this and how that's all gonna fit. But for now, we have our pedals assembled. Uh, let's go and put them on the rig, let's do it. So installing these should be a simple case of putting these uh, countersunk bolts in. Um, you get some T-slots with it as well. So you get a couple of T-slot nuts with it, uh, which is quite handy. So the Symagic base plate has a couple of mounting holes. It actually has eight mounting holes on it. So I'm gonna try and avoid using these because that would mean I have to probably undo this brake, or sorry, uh, undo the, the clutch here and the throttle um, to just get at those. So I'm gonna try and uh, just use these ones at the back um, and use these at the front. It probably means that I'm gonna have to adjust this slightly on my rig, uh, but that's the way that I'm going to uh, mount them, I think. So I like that they're um, providing T-slot nuts with this as well. It shows that they're, you know, I guess interested in the high-end market. Um, but it also shows that they're they're just catering for more and more applications, even applications like we see with the Simitech K2, um, the latest iteration of that uses more and more profile, uh, which is always you know uh, good to see I think because profile is just so versatile and uh, relatively readily available. So that should be the rears done. So for the SimLab rig, that means that I just have to undo these two here, so that I can adjust this to come backwards. Um, I do wonder though, should I have, no, I think that's, that's probably a decent position. I can always move it at a later stage. I can actually move this entire deck if I want to. When in doubt, use a power tool. So I'm not gonna tighten these uh, side bits up until I'm sure of the actual, uh, of, the, of the final position of this. Seems to be purchasing there. Okay, tighten that, tighten that. Of course, there's not a huge amount of strain on this, but that seems fairly, um, fairly rigid now. Hmm. There's the slightest bit of left and right movement in the pedals. Don't know if that's gonna be noticeable when we're using them. And I'm not sure if you guys can see that on the camera there. Something to keep an eye on. I know that these are tight. This is... Yeah, a little bit left in that one. 
Yeah, there's a little bit of left and right movement there, so I'm not sure. It seems to be in the pedal itself. We'll keep an eye on that. So the last thing to do here is to hook up the electronics. Don't really need to hide it or anything like that right now. I'm gonna plug in this. We've got a green light, green LED on here, um, but I am going to just uh, stick it under here, I'd say. Now, they've provided two of these pieces of 3M tape. Uh, I'm going to be a proper miser. I'm just gonna use a little sliver of it because really the thing is so light, that's all it takes. And I'm gonna, they, they gave me two of these large pieces. I'm just gonna save them for something else. I think using them on here might just be slight overkill. So I'm just gonna put it on the middle of the back here. There we go. I'm just gonna stick it um, I guess underneath the rig. I will tidy up these cables at a later stage, um, but because I'm going to be doing so much messing with this, um, under there should be just fine for now. And even if I need to adjust this, should all be fine. So uh, we should actually be ready to go and try these in game now. So here we are at one of my favorite car and track combinations. We're gonna do a quick first impressions of how this all feels. Um, the clutch on first impressions, there's... So the initial part of the travel of the clutch is really nice. The end part, the way it kind of drops off, is a little bit... I don't know, I can hear metal on metal, which is not great. Um, I really, I'll have to drive a car that needs a clutch for that. It kind of... Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, do I prefer those pedals with the little, you know upward movement bit at the back it's too early to tell really uh, but that's just my initial impression the clutch isn't as good as for example the throttle the throttle feels so like a real throttle it's crazy it's like it's it's really really nice and uh, the way you the way you can adjust it with that little dial on it is beautiful so you can make the clutch nice and heavy nice and light whatever you want and it's very easy if you look at the little bars just beside my head here it's very easy if I want to, you know, go to half, go to three quarters, go to a quarter. It's very easy to modulate that and it's very, very intuitive. So that is very, very nice. Um, the brake, uh, it is a 100 kg load cell. I specifically wanted a 100 kg load, uh, load cell. Uh, there is a 200 kg available, but really, does it matter that much? I'm not convinced. Uh, so, you know, if that 50 euro extra for the 200, if that matters, um... I don't know, like I'm pushing that quite hard. Now I am at the at the end of it, so I'm able to reach the end of that quite easily. But 100 kg, 200 kg, 80 kg is not exactly what you might think. Uh, if you look up, there's a great video by Niels Housingfeld um, about the about load cells, uh, and it's all to do with leverage, uh, leveraging and stuff like that. Um, my gut instinct, and I haven't even driven the car, so take this with a pinch of salt. But my gut instinct is that that would be more than enough. Um, the brake, the, the sensitivity seems seems quite good. I don't know what the actual sensitivity of the sensor is. If it's a 16-bit or a 32-bit, I don't know. Uh, but it seems to be plenty. Um, uh, you guys are like, stop talking, Lauren. Start driving. This is your first impressions. Stop talking about the pedals. Okay, so we're at Donington in the Formula Agile. And uh, now I have driven this recently. So uh, should... Should be relatively uh, used to it here. Okay. Yeah, the throttle is beautiful. The throttle is like... It's it's really... It's tasty. I love the throttle. The throttle is... Yeah. It's an absolute joy. Um, the brakes... Uh, trail braking there is quite accurate. Uh, I'm trying not to spin out here while I'm talking because this car is an absolute handful. As you might have seen in previous videos. Yeah, trail, trail braking is very, very nice. I need to tr just, I'm going to like brake hard here uh, on a tricky surface. Yeah, th this car locks up like nobody's business. I'll show you on the straight here. If I do slam the brakes, it should lock up. Yeah, it locks up really, really easily. Um, but it seems to be quite easy to modulate that brake. Let's push it here as well. Of course, I'm on cold tires. Yeah. It's quite, yeah, it's very easy to, uh, very easy to predict where the brakes are going to be. The hydraulic feel is really nice. It's like what you might find in a real car. Um, and a real race car. It feels like it's, it feels like it's doing something. It feels like it's pressing something. 
Uh, it's Yeah, it's super intuitive. Um, I don't think I need to adjust anything on that brake, uh, which is unusual. Usually when you use a brake for the first time, you need to do some adjustment. I'm quite happy. Of course, I will be trying the different springs and stuff. This is just the standard spring configuration, but that feels... That feels definitely good enough. Um, it'll be interesting to see, you know, how much more I can actually get out of it with the different springs. But uh, throttle feels good. Yeah, this it, they, they feel like a really nice high-end set of pedals. I love the simplicity of them. Uh, the simplicity is, a, it, it is just very welcome. Uh, sometimes you have too many things that you can adjust and it can be a little bit confusing for the consumer who just wants to sit in and drive with something that's really good uh there's not much you know uh you're not really sitting there thinking oh what if i adjust this what if i adjust that uh, and some pedal sets i've used in the past i've used I've, I've spent more time configuring them than actually using them so uh this is a very you guys have seen from this first impressions video it's a very kind of plug and play uh set of pedals with high-end features uh the one thing letting it down is that that clutch i think uh one thing that i've noticed as well when i when i come off the brake not sure if you guys can hear that when i come off the brake there's a little bit of a metal on metal sound um so i, I can't see them right now it's quite dark uh but i i wonder is there just no real bump stop is that bump stop uh you know a metal on metal thing so uh yeah all in all i'm, I'm very very happy with this they're they're very confident i mean you know, as as time goes on, these brakes are brakes that people are releasing, uh, especially the brake, are just getting more and more intuitive. Uh, it's not me getting more used to them or whatever. Um, they're it's it's just very very easy to drive. And you put a real race car driver in a real race car, even if they've never driven that real race car before. You know, a couple of laps, they know how to brake hard in that car. Now. I mean, they'll only be at probably, you know, 95% of what that car is capable of. But that's what real race drivers do because they have the confidence in the equipment. And I think that this brake and this throttle, they're as as close to, you know, top end as you can get. I can't, I can't imagine stuff being much better than this. That brake feels, yeah, exceptional. The clutch is, I think, the only thing that's kind of letting it down right now. So there you have it, my first impressions of these pedals. Um, very impressed with the throttle. I think it's as close to perfect as a, of a throttle as I've ever used. Um, I love the simplicity of it. I love the lack of adjustment. I love the lack of need for adjustment. Uh, it just really feels nice. I don't know um, uh, how much you can you know, adjust the throw of it, but the throw of it is really good. Some of the pedals that I've had recently, the throw has been quite long and I've wanted to shorten it. I don't get that out of the box with these, so that's very good. The brake uh, is beautiful. Uh, again, I haven't configured it at all, but I would be happy if you couldn't adjust anything at all. I would ha be happy if you couldn't change the springs at all. Uh, it's a very usable brake, so I'm I'm very happy with that. Uh, it feels more intuitive than most load cells that I've used, and again, I, I just don't feel the need to have to adjust that. Uh, the clutch is, as I say, the little bit of a letdown. Uh, it kind of feels... Yeah, I don't know. It feels a little bit like a mid-range clutch. It's good. Now, I haven't driven a H-pattern car yet, so maybe it's a little bit too early to say. Um, but, yeah, clutch is okay. Uh, throttle is great. The brake is is very, very good. Uh, I can't wait to get used to it more. Finally, huge shout out to uh, simware.eu who sent me these pedals. I've included a link in the description below. They start at 799 um, and uh, so far, I can't see any reason why they're not worth it. The build quality is quite good. Uh, oh yeah, one minor thing that I noticed as well is that there's a little bit of left and right play in the pedals. Uh, while I was driving there, I didn't actually notice it. But as I like swing my feet off it now, if I grab it with my toes, um, I do kind of feel a little bit. Uh, so um, that's something to keep an eye on. But when I'm driving, it, ha it didn't actually affect my driving at all. So um uh, yeah that's about it thanks a million for watching this first impressions video uh as usual in about four weeks or so i will have a full review of these pedals with all the ins and outs adjustments everything tested 
I'll have used it for all my league races. In the meantime, if you have any questions, I stream every Tuesday and Thursday at 9 o'clock GMT. Do tune in. I will be using these pedals for the coming weeks. Uh, ask me any questions you'd like. Uh, watch how I'm doing. And uh, yeah, that's the only real way that I'll get a good feel of you know where they stack up against other uh, pedals as well. So that's it for me. Thanks a million. I'm Lawrence. I'll chat to you later.